So you just made a cool little effect and you want to save it so you don't have to remake this node tree. Well, today I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can do this. So let's go to the clip that has the effect, open up fusion. So let's say you want to save the node tree. Well, what you can do is highlight everything, right click any of the nodes, go to settings, save all as, and then you, you'll just save it as whatever you want. Hey, future me here, I think I might have forgotten something. Thing. So when we go to settings, save all as, you might actually need to create a folder. So this is um, where you need to be. Uh, templates. You might not have this edit folder. If you don't, just create it. That's no big deal. And then uh, you can sort this uh, between your effects and your transitions. Now what you can do is go to effects, templates, edit, effects. And then you just scroll down until you see the, the thing. See, test. I'm going to drag this and drop it over here. Hey, that's the node tree that we made. Now, if you don't see this, all you have to do is just reset DaVinci Resolve. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this real quick. Now, the way this node tree is set up, there's only a few settings that I actually want to change. Like, I'm not going to change any of the merge settings, but I do want to change the edge colors. Maybe in the future, I want to adjust the road slash dial settings so there's only a few settings that I actually want out of this node tree what I'm trying to say here is that we can save this as a single node that has only the settings we want it's the same process we're gonna highlight everything right click one of the nodes but we're going to go to macro create macro now this seems like a lot of anxiety I mean there are just so many boxes that we can check but it's just your node tree with all of the settings available. <clears throat> so all we have to do is go through and just check the boxes of the settings we want. So for example, this is the road slash dilate. Well, I don't need to change the filter or the clip mode. The only thing that I'm going to be adjusting is the amount. So we have amount. What's also nice is that we can rename this because I don't know what amount is going to be in the future. So I can just relabel this erode slash dilate. I spelled that wrong, dilate. The next node is the edge detect. I only want to change the edge color. So we're just going to find edge color. Hey, this is the red, green, and blue. Let's just check all of those. Next, we have the merge and uh, we have a background highlighted on it. That's because we're plugging our media node into the background arrow. So you just go through and check all the settings that you want in your macro. And you can come up here and name it whatever you want. So I'm going to name it test. Go to file, save as, save it as a test. Now, when you hit shift space, we can type in test. There it is. And we have our test macro. Now, here's the thing. Our node tree isn't optimized well. Our media node is getting plugged into three different nodes. So if I delete all this and add in the test node, nothing happens. Well, that's because we got to take our media node and connect it to the other three arrows. This, uh, this doesn't look good. This is a, a, a mess. Also, I only added the edge color for one of the edge detects. So if I wanted to change both of them, well, I'd have to add the other edge color. And that's kind of annoying that we have to change two different settings so that we have a uniform color. My point is that we have to optimize the node tree before we make the macro. Guess what? If we scroll over here, I already optimized it. The main thing is this pipe router. Our media node gets plugged into it, and then we use the pipe router to split off into the three nodes that we connect into. So to add this into your pipe Pipeline, all you have to do is hold alt and click there, there you go now you have a pipe router now when we create the macro we're just going to have a single input that we plug into and not three the next thing that we have to do is optimize the edge detect color settings and there's a few different ways that we can do this but what I'm going to do is copy one of them and then I'm going to delete the second one Ooh. right click but we're going to paste this as an instance so if I pin this here and then open up the original one any changes I make here gets applied to the instance version but obviously there's an issue it's copying the edge width brightness gamma all of that and we want the second one to have different settings a really simple solution is just to right click the setting you don't want in the instance and de-instance it so now I can 
can adjust these settings and it doesn't affect anything else. All right, let's create this macro. Same process as before, highlight everything, right click, create macro, and we can go through and check all the settings that we want. So again, a road, we want the amount. And like I said earlier, we're using the pipe router as the input. So this is the only thing with an input or background setting check. Now with our edge detect, we've linked the color settings, so we don't wanna mess with the instance version, we only want the color settings from the original edge detect. I'm gonna label this one test, uh, test two, file, save as. Let's delete all of this. And then when we hit shift space and type in test two, check this out. Hey, 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 we got a single input and look what happens when I change the color settings. It's uniform. Now, if you notice, when we save this, it didn't get added to the effects. So you can only access test two in Fusion. But what if you want just a drag and drop effect in the edit page? Well, let's uh, right click somewhere, edit macro, find test number two, go to file, open, find test two, there it is. So we're going to copy this and then go back to Fusion here. Scroll down until you find templates. Hey, edit. Like I said earlier, if you don't have the edit folder or the effect folder, you can create these. And then, uh, you know, just paste test number two or whatever macro it is. So now we can just close this. Hey, look, that's test two. So let's uh, just delete test two, go back to the edit page. We don't have the effect right here. So let's open up effects, scroll down until you find test two, drop that on. Hey, hey look at this. We can go to the effects and then uh, adjust all the stuff like you normally would in for effects. This brings me to my second point about why it's important to optimize your effects because here we go, we got test two, that works. But remember test one, that wasn't optimized well. So if I drag and drop this onto our clip, um, nothing happens. Anyways, that's how you make plugins. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or join the Discord and either myself or one of the editing helpers can help you. That's the end of the video. Goodbye.